Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. In today's video, we're traveling back to a Coney Bell tiny house village to meet Cindy and take a tour of her gorgeous park model tiny home, which she purchased on a budget. This spacious tiny home is all Cindy needs for a permanent home, and she's also figured out a way to have it pay for itself through a clever business strategy. If you like videos like this one, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new tour. And if you'd like to see a detailed tour of the tiny house village where Cindy is parked, make sure you check out our link in the description. But right now, let's jump right in and take a tiny tour with Cindy. I'm Cindy Bolero and welcome to the Sunflower Tiny House. I unexpectedly lost my job and I moved in with a friend. I learned that I could really live very small. I needed to start trying to find my own place. I thought, you know, I'm going to check out these tiny homes. When I came here to Coney Bell, I just knew like this was the place that I wanted to be at. And I really had always said to myself, I wanted a house in the mountains. And then, you know, here it was, it was gonna happen. I came across this place in Yadkinville, North Carolina. There was actually an RV dealership, but they had some tiny homes on them. Walked into a model like this and I said, ooh, that's the one. I was able to pick my countertops, the flooring, the wall coloring. So I actually feel like I had a lot of choices. My budget really was to stay within $40,000. And this one came out right around 45. I had a few upgrades. When I moved here, I knew that I was going to be traveling. That's just sort of my lifestyle. I knew that I wanted to be able to rent my place out on Airbnb to help recoup the costs. I have my house open at least two or three weekends a month for rentals. I've had wonderful comments from people who stayed here. It's really, of course, helped with the expenses. I mean, I've covered my expenses almost every month. And I just love coming home. Really like the first thing I do is like open up the book to see, you know, what people have written. So it just, it warms my heart that people really felt that warm, cozy feeling here. That just means so much to me. The cost to stay here at Coney Bell really ranges. My lot rent is $550 a month. And that includes water, hookups to the sewage, and then also yard maintenance. You know, when I was wanting to move to a tiny house village, I really wanted that sense of community. And I had an idea that the people that would live in a tiny house would have a like-mindedness about taking care of our planet. And I found that to be really true. My sunflower tiny house is considered a park model and it is 11 feet by 38 feet, 396 square feet. Now, one thing I really loved and I wanted this was a lot of windows. So I have 18 windows. Also love how on the little top windows, those little baby shutters, I just think they're so cute. When I was having my deck built, I really wanted a larger outside space as well to enjoy. And I also wanted it to be maintenance free. So I picked the Trek decking because it's maintenance free and I've really enjoyed that. This is my seasonal garden. I love changing this out every season to have some new flowers in it. This past year there were just a plethora of day lilies and irises here and it was really beautiful. So at Oconee Bell we are required to have skirting on our tiny houses which we really you really want anyway because it really helps with insulation. So this is a really thick wearable ply board that I had put around here. It was also important to have a couple little doors so if we need to get under there and also some ventilation. 
I believe that the skirting was about a thousand dollars with materials and labor. Definitely worth it, yes. I have never had any water freezing or any problems like that. So I heat with gas and I have uh, that for the heating of the house and also the stove and range. So I have a big tank and they come out here and fill it up when necessary and I love it. So I love sitting out here having coffee in the mornings. It's a great place to just look around my lovely neighborhood that I have. And during COVID when we're on lockdown, I invited people over for teeny tiny dinner parties and we sat outside, it was perfect. And we could still socialize with each other and enjoy being together. So I have vinyl siding on my tiny house and it has held up so great. I think in the three years I've power washed it twice and it was so easy, just came super clean and I've really loved that. I specifically wanted a sliding door because I just wanted the door on the side that seemed more efficient use of the um, door space and so come on inside and I'll show you what it looks like. This is my tiny house that I have lived in now for three years and I just absolutely love it. Something that's a little bit different about this style of tiny house is that it's called a park model which means that it's wider than the towables. Towables are eight feet and mine is almost 11. And believe me, that extra three feet makes a lot of difference. One of the other things I love about my tiny house are all the windows, which makes it feel really roomy. And I'm here in this perfect location in Mills River in the mountains and I get to look out on Forge Mountain every day, which I absolutely love. The couch, which a lot of the furniture came with the house, which was great, is a sofa bed. I love hosting people here. This is, you know, our little gathering place. Have plenty of seating for, let's see, one, two, three, four, at least five people. So a very good friend of mine, Marianne, is a beautiful photographer. And so since this is called the Sunflower House, she took these beautiful sunflower pictures and put them on canvas for me. And so they're just really special for me to have here in the house. I chose the name the Sunflower House because the outside is yellow and it just seemed to fit really well. I have always loved sunflowers. I think they really represent hope and optimism and joy. And I try to live that way in my life. And so that's why I picked the Sunflower House. One thing that was important to me to have was some furniture that I had in previous homes. And so this was actually my grandmother's table and lamp. And, you know, in a tiny house, you have to be very selective about what furniture you bring in and what size it is, but this just fit perfectly. And I'm really happy to have Mimi Spirit here with me. So my house is heated with a central heating system, but the air conditioning is right here, tucked back here because it's winter time right now. In the months when it's hot, I bring it out and it vents out through this window. And then I also have another air conditioning unit in the bedroom so that everything can be very nice and cool. Okay, let's head to the kitchen. What I love about my kitchen is that I have full size appliances and I have a gas range, which is pretty cool, and a full size refrigerator. I do not have a dishwasher. I am the dishwasher. So <laughs> that was an option that I decided just, you know, not to have a dishwasher. So one of the features that I really love is my large sink. And I had a choice of like, if I wanted it, you know, two smaller ones, but the, I like the larger size. When people come here to stay as an Airbnb, you really have everything that you need. So like in this cabinet, there's plenty of plates and cups and glasses. I found these not too long ago and I just had to have them, sunflower plates, of course. I have plenty of counter space. That was another thing that was really important to me. I was able to pick the countertops and the backsplash. And then also the color that I wanted for the cabinets. There was a really a lot of things that I got to choose on my own, which was great. 
So I really love my colorful pieces up here and I had these beautiful pieces and I thought, you know, I'm going to hang on to these. I'm not sure if I have a place for them here, but I just could not let them go. So I was so happy when I realized that I could put them above my counter. And I just think they add a lot of like color splash to the place. I just want to point out all my magnets on my refrigerator. So I love to travel. And so one of the things that I do is collect a magnet wherever I go. And I also ask my Airbnb guests if they would like to add to my collection. And so some of these have been added by my guests, which is really fun to come home and see where they've been. When I first moved in, I did not have a washer and dryer. This was a storage closet. Fortunately here at Oconee Bell, we have a clubhouse that has a washer and dryer in it. So I would just go over once a week and do my laundry. And then a dear friend of mine, Lynn Baker, who is no longer with us, passed along her stackable washer and dryer to me. To get this in here was quite fun. We had to take off the refrigerator doors, the cabinet doors, all kinds of doors to get it in. But my friend Kevin miraculously got it in here and I love having it here now just so I can do laundry whenever I like. So here is the dining room area slash office. So when I was looking for a tiny home, I knew that I also needed to have a space to work because I'm self-employed and I work at home. So this works out perfectly because I have this table. It came with the house and with these four chairs and I can then also make it my desk. So this is my office in a bag, my rolling office, <laughs> and I can just take this wherever I need to. And then it has my computer and all of my files and everything that I need in it. And I set up here at my dining room table and voila, it's an office. I'm ready to work. So since this is my home and I Airbnb it, a lot of people are always saying to me, aren't you afraid that like people are going to mess with your personal stuff? And so I came up with one little solution for that. And that is that I have these little cards around different places like this one that says, thank you for respecting my personal items, which just tells people, you know, I'd prefer if you not use these items. And then I have other signs that say for guests. So I just have those signs here and there that let people know that they can uh, use these items and I've never had a problem with it. Okay, we're gonna head to the bathroom. Welcome to the bathroom. <laughs> you don't say that very often to people. So I love my bathroom. I wanted really some counter space in the bathroom. That was really important to me when I was looking at tiny houses. And a lot of them just have a very small like pedestal sink, but this one has a cabinet and I liked that and lots of drawers and even a great medicine cabinet. And again, in here, I have tried to think of things that guests might forget. And so I have a side that says for guests. And then I have a side that's also for me. So that's available to guests. A super cool feature about this tiny house is that I have a shower with a tub. So that's really roomy to get in there and take a shower. And then over here is the cabinet with all of the towels. And again, I've got special towels for the guests and it kind of notes what those are. And then these ones up here, I just use for myself. This is a regular plum toilet. I did look into compost toilets for a little bit, but then I decided to just go with the regular thing. Besides here at Oconee Bell, they have a sewage system that we're able to hook up to very easily. So this is a queen size bed, which is really the perfect size, I think. One great thing is under this bed is storage. It hinges up and so I have this entire space of storage. Then I have two 
little miniature closets, but one on each side. And this whole unit also was like this from the builder. I think this builder did a great job of really capturing every little bit of space that you're gonna need. So this is one of the closets. I have a matching one on the other side. And again, perfect size for everything that I need. For many, many years, I worked in the performing arts. I was did marketing for performing arts organizations in Charlotte and in Greenville, South Carolina. And so I got to see some amazing performers. And two of those were Aretha Franklin and Coco Taylor. And so I was able to ask if they would sign a picture for me and they did. And so I have it framed. And when I wake up every morning, I get to see their lovely faces that say, go take on the world today. When I started talking about tiny homes to some of my friends and family, they were very skeptical. I just want to say that I think this is probably one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And now they've all come around and said, hmm, well, I think you were right. Don't let people discourage you about tiny house living. Go with your gut. I just really knew this was something I wanted. And if you have that passion about it, just keep going for it. Thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And make sure that you check out our detailed tour of Oconee Bell Tiny House Village via the link in the description.